Welcome back to another episode. You have, as always, me, wonderful little me. Big. We have the Red Hat Man himself, Rival. Red Hat. <laughs> yes, the Red Hat Man. That's, that's yes. So the, the Red Hat Man. I miss the Red Hat. I feel like it's gonna be one of your one of your nights of uh, stumbling over your words. I haven't even started drinking yet. I know you've already had a few issues. I know. I can't read. Apparently, that's what's gonna make tonight you're, so much fun. Your brain quit mid sentence of trying to describe what Mountain Dew you're drinking. I really did. I saw Baja sleep. Like, like, mm. <laughs> but to be fair, there's a lot of shiny objects on it, so ADHD. My defense. That's not completely valid, but my defense is that so you can't use that all the time. It doesn't work that way. Until it goes away, I can always use it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that what allows me to use it. Like until you grow two inches, you are a very short person. Two inches isn't gonna do anything. Just let you know. That's mm. someone say five seven. That's not even average height. Mm. It's still under average height. Mm, that's, that's right. Still under average height. You're still that's right, you are very you're five four. I forgot about that. A five five is still supposed to be a five seven, it's still under average height. I would say two inches is a lot, but apparently. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're looking at snow, yes, two inches is a lot. Yeah. For some. If you're coming to height there's, or extremities, no, it's not a lot, according to. The motion of the ocean. <laughs> Doesn't matter how deep the ocean is. The motion of it. All right. Still never hit bottom. Well, you never know. I mean, you drop a brick into the Mariana Trench, it gets there eventually. May take gymnastics and whatnot to get there, but hey, it gets there. All right, all right. So we've kind of, or I've kind of spoken to you about this, um, this subject matter. And before we even dive into this episode, forewarning: this is a historical episode. We are referencing a historical incident or uh, event, situation, whatever you want to call it. This happened in the past during World War II. This is not our opinions. Possibly some trigger warning. So just if you don't like World War II content, if you do not like hearing about the atrocities that took place, I highly recommend just skipping this episode. Just say, because I've heard many other people cover this subject and uh, we're not going to go we're not going to go as in depth as others because there are subject matters in here. I don't want to talk about, but Google it and you can find out everything. Well, almost everything. You can find out a lot. Information is still technically coming out. So anyways, today's subject matter is unit 731. Roggle just kind of discovered this a little bit ago. We're going to learn and educate at the same time. He's going to learn and be educated. I'm going to attempt to educate you. And read and educate. <laughs> that's pretty much how you. Yeah, that's a good way. So we're going to kind of dive into it. But again, if you want to learn more information about this, just simply Google unit 731. So simply put, that will be your safest bet. But yeah, we will be lots of reading to make sure we get it historically accurate. I'd rather not. Be like, oh, this is what happens. We'll be like, you're full of shit. They did this. Yeah, that's a lot worse. A lot worse. Yeah, it'll be a brief overview because there's no way we can get into every single thing that. It's World War Two. You can't. You can't even cover all of World War Two in a year. Like, there's too much shit going on. It's like a whole independent podcast in and of itself. And maybe I'll start just for myself. Wait. <laughs> Right, so let's dive into it. So, uh, sorry for butchering the non-English language. Just like to say that I get a lot of shit in my streams for butchering anything outside of English. Yeah, but yeah. So, U.S. 731. For those of you who are not familiar, um, is a Covert Biological Chemical War Warfare Research and Development Unit 
of the Imperial Japanese Army that engaged in lethal human experimentations and biological weapon manufacturing during World War II. Um, it also technically took place in what Japan is calling the Second Sino-Japanese War, which is 1937-1945. Again, historical. Can't say that enough. This is We're just reading this off as it is and giving our input about the horribleness. So yeah, a brief overview. Brief overview. Yeah, he's right. It's going to be a rough night for English. It, it killed over an estimated 200,000 to 300,000 people. It was based in Pingfong District of Harbin, the largest city in the Japanese puppet state of Man, Man Chukoko, which is now Northeast China had active branch office throughout China and Southeast Asia. So that's just like the biggest brief overview ever. <laughs> I don't know how to explain this. So basically this is often compared to the Holocaust that took place in Germany and all throughout Europe at the hands of the Nazis. Uh, this one, of course, took place at the hands of the Japanese. During World War II, same time frame, same time, all the other shit in the world that was going on was happening. Um, 731 were responsible for, for some of the most notorious war crimes committed by the Japanese armed forces. Um, and they, conduct, they conducted tests on people who were dehumanized and internally referred to as logs. So this establishment or this location was uh, often came across as like a lumber mill and every individual that came in there for experimentation was itemized as a log, log number, whatever. So it flew underneath the radar for a while, but it was also said that at one point or another, after, even after World War II for several decades later, that virtually all scientists and even doctors at one point worked at Unit 731. So that's kind of like the more oh shit moment that I took away from this. Uh, at some point, your doctor, your scientist may have worked at 731 doing all these horrible, horrible experiments, which <laughs> you all can't hear it, but Rock will can. <laughs> these experiments. Uh, on humans, keep in mind, on humans included disease injections, control dehydration, biological weapon testing, hyperbaric pressure chamber testing, vivisection, organ harvesting, amputation, and standard weapon testing. Uh, victims included not only kidnapped men and women, including pregnant women, children, but also babies born. Uh, What's the best way to put that? The R word. I don't really want to say it. Uh, from staff members on the inside. So, like, they took everyone, anyone, victims came from all over, all different nationalities. Uh, the majority of which did come from being Chinese and significant minority being Russians. So, yeah. So, with that said, Ronald, well, what's your thoughts so far? This horribleness, awesome, it's terrible. <laughs> He's reading. I was so they've grabbed they've grabbed people from all over, not just not just Japan. Anybody they can put their hands on. Correct. Anybody in like the Southeast Asia. Yeah, and the um the experiments that they're doing is are crazy. I mean, with the dismemberment, all of the uh, I mean the gas experiments. What were some other ones? Because you list off a bunch of them. Oh my god, there's so there's so many, and we can dive right into it. Um, but let's wrap this up. This is kind of like the the remaining. This is kind of like the remaining uh, intro to this that's often seen on anywhere when you look up Unit Seven Thirty One, which is this was originally set up by the military police for the Empire of Japan. Unit Seven Thirty One was taken over and commanded until the end of the war by a general, a combat medic officer named General Shahiro Ishii. I know I'm I'm probably butchering the shit out of that, so I apologize again. 
the facility itself was built in 1935, replaced for the Zogma Force Fortress. Oh, I didn't it all. <laughs> a prison experimentation camp. Um, the general and his team used it to expand the capabilities. Rece this program received generous support from the Japanese government until the end of the war in 1945. Unit 731 researchers arrested by Soviet Soviet forces were tried at the December 1949 uh, Russian word Kabovsky war crimes trials. Those captured by the U.S. were secretly given immunity in exchange for the data gathered during the human experiment. The U.S. helped cover the experimentation, the human experimentations, and handed, handed stipends to the perpetrators. Stipends? Stipends. The Americans co opted the research, bioweapon information, and exper experiences for the use of the U.S.'s own biological warfare program, much like that had been done by the Nazi German researchers in Operation Paperclip. So, yeah, it wasn't until August of 2022 that Tokyo District Court ruled that Japan had permitted biological warfare in China and consequently slaughtered many of its residents. And this is kind of around the time this all became public information. 2002 is right around uh, when this all came to light and everybody was able to uncover and see what happened. So, but everything, like all the research I've done, and even a couple like, I, I wouldn't even call them big names, but documentaries I've seen on this are often compared to the Holocaust. And some say it's up there as being worse, if not like it makes the Holocaust look light. And I'm not agreeing with any of this. Both are terrible situations. Both tons of people died. Very sick, mentally deranged people operated them. And yeah, we don't get it. But I mean, it seems way more diabolical than, than the Holocaust. And all because I mean, the. So here's the here's kind of thing. Because that's what a lot of people have like, a lot of people are like, well, this is talk about human experimentation. This is talk about human um, mm -hmm. de demoralizing humanity as a whole. And something to kind of keep in mind too is 2002 is, is only 22 years ago. Okay. World War II, 1945, was 80 years ago. We are now at the point. Yeah, we are now at the point where we have been told by generations, multiple generations about the Holocaust. And it's kind of like, oh, yes, this happened. This is fucking terrible. Hitler, all of them deserve to die because of what they did to all the people in the Holocaust. This is new so to speak, it's starting to come to light because of a lot of things happening right now in the world. Uh, 20 years later, 22 years later, it's starting to come back up because of certain events taking place in the world. Uh, not saying one's less than the other, but the human aspect of this of being experimented on, Nazis did that too. Nazis actually sent people over uh, to specific pharmaceutical studies and let them test out items to see how they would work inside the humans. And when all the humans died, they literally went, oops, sorry, we need 20,000 more humans. Can you send them to us? So, I mean, like, it's all fucking terrible, but yeah. There's Was really that no Operation Paperclip? That one that you're talking about? Um, I don't know if that was part of Operation Paperclip, but... Paperclip, I believe, is like sharing the research. Like they gave us all the information about oh, what the they did. That's the US one. Never mind. Yeah, there was a bunch of like global that was like okay. we need yeah. we we need test subjects, and the Nazis gave them. Mm -hmm. Um. So, anyways, kind of going to the experimentation because again, there's a there's a lot to cover in this, and we're barely gonna just scrape the icing off the cake in this one. But to put in perspective. Um, the atrocities they were they were charged with 
was mass killing massacre uh the baton death march hellship uh sex slavery use of chemical weapons human experimentation and biological weapons so i mean they were yeah they were <laughs> bad dudes it's the best way to do it so mm -hmm. But just to get into the experiment, that's what we're just gonna kind of jump in with it. And like, Rock, you can just look at the stuff. We're reading the same one. I'm, I'm assuming you're reading the same page. <laughs> so I told you. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it's no. I mean, you're just you're going through lists and everything. So like, the it's is insane. Um, the biological warfare side of everything, where they were they would use. Like infected, infected fleas. Yep. I mean, they were biologically engineering uh, diseases. Bugs. I mean, yep. just like bubonic plague. Just like there's, there's so many things that like, are like mind blowing that they're trying to even do, and the, the fact that they test this stuff on people is even crazier. The the, the one part you're leaving out too. And maybe you haven't gotten to yet. Is it just test out like how do we cure this? How do we fix it? They caused it. They were the front and the backside of this treatment. They caused all these issues. And then going, okay, well now let's fix it. So during World War II, the big thing with the US was frostbite. They couldn't like we couldn't figure out if it was if it was curable, if we could fix it, if we could prevent it, what could happen. They Unit 731 did that. They gave people frostbite and they pushed it to the limit of like, how far can we go before it's too far? When this all got cleared, quote unquote, cleared, and we got the information after the war, we used it and we went, okay, well, we were already doing the pressure chamber. We just weren't giving people fucking frostbite like Unit 731 was. Unit 731 was causing people to get frostbite they would leave them out in the cold they would put them in chambers like they got very sadistic and that's the probably the best word to use is very very fucking sadistic with how they went about all these things so like uh, let's go with the other section is the first big one on this list stop fucking clicking shit there we go <laughs> This section is a surgery conducted for experimental purposes on living organisms, typically animals, with a nervous system to view living internal structure. The word more broadly used for a uh, prorative catch them all term for experimentation on live animals by an organization. They did this through the entire fucking time. Thousands of men, women, children, infants interned at prisoners or war camps were subjected to vivisections, often performed without any like anesthesia or and it was usually lethal. So there's videos starting to resurface of this happening. What? OK. And uh, there's like they cut a pregnant woman open to see how it all looks on the inside, which is where some docu uh, documentation reports came from. Of Oh, so this is actually what's going on during pregnancy. So like it's a really like the more you be into this, a the more you realize what you've been told, especially like as a dad, the things they show you all the pictures and you go, oh that's cool. I wonder how that happened. But that, very dark history. Uh so yeah, but it's a super invasive surgery that they would use on prisoners and they would actively remove organs on live humans to see can you function without that. What well, if we replace it, like. They would amputate limbs in order to study what blood loss would do. How much can you actually lose? What limb is too much of a limb to be lost to see? Like, can you still have a way of life? Or are you just kind of beyond crippled? So this is their, their live action science class. They're literally learning. That's putting it so, like, that's putting it so Y7 rating. Yeah. I mean, it's, life. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, that's exactly what they're doing. I mean, they're, they're going through every step of the entire human body of, of giving it plagues, removing things, putting yep. things back, you know, bleeding it out, 
putting it testing the, the limits of the environment. Yep. Like one of the more gnarly ones was some prisoners had their stomach surgically removed and had their esophagus connected or reattached to the intestines to see like, is the stomach really needed? In case you're wondering, yeah, <laughs> and crucial. Uh, but the crazy part of all this is like the Japanese army surgeon, Ken Yusa, I don't know, whatever, suggests that practicing vivisection on human subjects was widespread even outside of 731. So like he, they believed and supported this idea that don't worry, it's not just us. Japan's not the only one doing this. There's other people doing it. By the way, if everyone else is doing it, it still doesn't make it right. Like, not in every situation. Some situations. <laughs> but it was all said to be routine. It's all for practice rather than research. So, like, this is where the thing of, like, doctors, a lot of doctors would come in through this here, this camp, and get training because they'd be like, okay, we know what this does. Now you need to practice removing a limb. So come to the camp, come to 731, get practice surgically removing a limb. Cool, now you're good at it. Go back so you can help the troops or you can help whoever. It's like that is the, at least to me, that's one like mind altering what the fuck moments and the, these doctors were never held accountable or like, mm, you kind of participated in it. Whether you actively knew or didn't know, or you want to go monk, no, no see, no hear, no uh, taste type thing, yeah. it, you still did it. So, but it, this whole thing is just twisted because, like you said, they would deliberately infect these people with diseases, like the plague, to see if they could develop a plague bomb. Because, like, that was literally the purpose of can we infect people with the plague? Okay, cool, we can. Can we create that into a bomb to then use on our enemies? It's like it's all just it's all just super fucked up. And it's still dropped on China. China and Chinese cities. For the most part, yes. Yeah. Ideally, it is said that they were practiced uh, China was more of like a quick spot. If it worked there, they could take it global. Um, but that's kind of, again, World War II, them, China, Germany, Italy, Russia, all bad people, some a lot worse than the others. And then, you know, some flip sides, some were trying to overthrow others during the situation. But Japan was basically the way often it saw as they were testing it on China, since that was their back door. And if it worked, then they could take it to Europe or Russia or South America or your uh, South Africa, not South America, North America. So it's thought that they were trying to do this for a global domination scale. If it worked in China, they could spread their wings elsewhere. So yeah. but like they had, uh, they often had epidemics break out like typhoid and para paratyphoid there we go in the wells and marshes and the houses as well as wells that use them into snacks distribute to the locals it's like the amount of evil is just boundless with these people during this time so yeah Let's see what was the other? I mean, the, the the leaders at this point within the during this time, there was no like uh, they didn't give a shit. I mean, obviously, there was nothing nothing about caring. It was just more about power at that point. Trying to Absolutely, see what it's they a... could get away with. It was not advan about advancing anything within them. It was just about seeing how much power they could have over the world. Yeah, and it was control. all about control. Yeah. All it was. Let's see. They had. Bombs that could affect agriculture, reservoirs, wells, as well as well as well as other areas with anthrax and plague-carried fleas, typhoid, cholera, and other deadly pathogens. 
Uh, during their biological bombing experiments, researchers dressed in protective suits would examine the dying victims in their final moments even. Uh, infected food supplies and clothing were dropped in or dropped by air, airplane in areas of China not occupied by Japanese forces. Uh, poison food, candy, or is given to unsuspected victims. Plague fleas, infected clothing, infected supplies, encased in bombs were dropped on various targets. Uh, cholera, anthrax, plague, estimated to have killed at least 400,000 civilians. Uh, Tolar Tol Armia was also tested on Chinese citizens. I know I'm butchering that one. Tolermia, also known as rabbit fever, infects this disease caused by a bacterium that I'm not going to pronounce. Symptoms include fever, red ulcers, and large lymph nodes, uh, a form that resulted in pneumonia or a throat infection. So, like, these were numerous attacks throughout the years. It wasn't until a delegation of army and foreign medical personnel in November of 1941, started actually documenting the evidence and treated the afflicted. So it went on for years before they're like, oh, hey, we should probably research this and document it better so we have paper. But the report, the report on the Japanese using the plague infected fleas was made widely available by the following years, but was not addressed by the Allies' powers until Franklin D. Roosevelt issued a public warning in 1943 condemning the attacks. So at this point, what, I say 37 early on? What was the beginning year? 36. 36. So 30, no, 37. Yeah, no, 35. 37. For what? When this, said, this uh, oh. plant, yeah, 1937 and 1945. So yeah. we're talking three, six years this went on before the U.S. stepped in and was like, hey, watch out, and this is bad. Like, again, wasn't really mentioned, wasn't really taught. Then you had, in 1944, the Japanese Navy explored the possibility of attacking cities in California with biological weapons, known as Operation PX, or Operation Cherry Blossoms that night. Just by the way, side note, these operation names for everybody, some are really good. Some are like, this is stupid. Just, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> the plan for this attack involved a Syrian aircraft launched by a submarine aircraft carrier upon the west coast of the U.S., specifically the cities of San Diego, L.A., and San Francisco. The uh, planes would spread weaponized bubonic plagues, cholera, typhus, dengue fever, and other pathogens in a biological terror attack upon the population. Submarines crew would infect themselves and run ashore in a suicide mission. That whole thing, like, okay, we got into the war because, you know, Japan came over, attacked Pearl Harbor, suicide bombers. What is with just suicide bombers and suicide vests and all this? Like, I will never fully wrap my head around the fact that there is anyone that's like this is for a good cause i'm gonna kill myself like there is nothing i believe so you <laughs> like i'm gonna kill you but i'm going down with you too like we well, gotta look at the time for this because i mean we we I'm talking time now. like the, i'm talking like middle east too like it's just a very popular yes. tactic of the asian era area I, I think it's a different a different mindset now than it was then. and it was more of a brainwashing you don't oh, yeah. have a choice it's what you do. now it's a religious uh religious belief yeah that they're, well, that they're going to a higher power that they're, they're giving themselves to within middle east i think the fine so, line of of those two I, mm. yeah without that I mean, it's a fine line it? yeah yeah that's a whole different shit show yeah, but I think the way that they the the brainwashing everything that was going on back then of this is what we're doing, this is for a cause bigger than you. Yeah, 
and the fact that there was no like uh this might be wrong because we're doing it on a human person well we also gotta remember to like at the time of this event internet not a thing cellular phone not a thing worldwide access to data information and news not a thing you wanted to get information about japan you waited days to get it you did not hear about shit going on in japan and the u.s live at the same time like right now with everything going on in baltimore with the uh, cargo ship that tore down the bridge bridge by crashing into it everyone in the world knows about that it is broadcast everywhere at the time of world war ii the access to information was not there so it was very easily or it's very easy for countries big and small small like japan big like russia to really just be like this is what we're doing you have to believe this because and then here's all of our evidence here's all of our backing there's no outside influence nowadays we have outside influence everywhere mostly everywhere there's still some parts of the world that don't have access to it not saying north korea but there's other places <laughs> but so that's something people need to keep in mind because i've had a brief discussion with somebody about this subject matter it's like a week or two ago and they're like well i just don't understand why they why didn't they call for help why didn't like hey, um call who you, why did who call for help uh prisoners like why did anybody escape because there's some people did escape yeah. and they're like well why did they call how <laughs> you understand you needed a phone and these phones were inside of a building and you were in enemy territories being the whitest person there and they're going hmm you don't look like us you look like the enemy yes yeah. so yeah back to this operation though uh, this Operation Cherry Blossoms at Night was finalized March 26th of 1945, shortly shell or shelved shortly after due to the strong opposition of the Chief of General Staff. Uh, Yoshira Yuzmea, Yumezu, Yumezu, there we go. Yumezu later explained his decision as such, if, bi if bacteriological warfare is conducted, it will grow from the dimension of war between Japan and America to an endless battle of humanity against bacteria. Japan will earn the derision of the world. Of the world. Basically, but they'll look really bad for the rest of the time. So. Yeah. They have other experimentations. They have weapon testing that they did, like tossing grenades in a position and having human targets stand near them. Like, what's the blast yeah. radius? Put up, on, put up on boards and shit like that so they couldn't move. And they Flame, would flamethrowers. Yep. Flamethrowers were tested on these people. Um, they were tied to stakes and used as targets to test pathogen, releasing bombs, chemical weapons, shrapnel bombs, various amounts of fragments, and explosive bombs, as well as bayonets and knives. I knew about the bayonets because uh, death by a thousand cuts. Mm -hmm. It was often, like, even prisoners of war of Japan, those who survived have spoken about like being stabbed by bayonets or being cut by bayonets just to see the sharpness of it. It's like, that's probably the only part of this where I'm like, yeah, they did that 100%. We have full documentation. We have videos. Yeah, just, that's the equivalent to you putting a, like an M80 on the ground and putting your Lego piece near it. How bad's the Lego piece burn? Is the Lego guy still collectively together or is he missing his arms? Terrible. I was looking at some of the other the other experiments they did that were kind of, that were crazy, like the low pressure chambers. I'm just not, like in the forties, trying to think of how they how these things are made and like how I'm assuming they're gigantic rooms or gigantic, you know buildings that they made for this because nothing is small back then. Everything's gigantic. Um, let's see. Is there a picture of this? There's aerial footage of the plant you would see at the very top. It's a huge complex. Yeah. So, I, mean, the, I mean, the compound that they had, yeah, was not, was not small by any means. But like the, um, 
what was it called? The, the permits and centrifugal force yep. uh, that they were doing of spinning people. Centrifuge. That are spun until they're dead. I, could, it's, I mean, I've been on roller coasters and other other rides at uh, Worlds of Fun or whatever. You just spin in a circle. Cool. Couldn't imagine spinning that much until you're dead. I mean, and then like dropping heavy objects on them and crushing them to see what it does, what the body looks like, what the hell, if the, what the body can take. Being electrocuted, dehydrated with a hot fan like a piece of jerky. Mm -hmm. like, I mean, you're being dried out. It's, it's it's insane. I mean, just burning them. It's nuts. Centrifuge is probably one of the most centrifuge or yeah, that's that one is weird. Here's the thing. Being spun absolutely would suck. Mm -hmm. But there comes a point when you just pass out. And then you probably die later. Because, like, think about how many people pass out or faint on, like, just uh, cylinder rides at, like, Worlds of Fun, where you're on the yeah. board and they spin it really fast. And the board goes up and comes down. I've seen way too many people pass out. The burning alive... Yeah. The burning alive would it would be the worst thing. One it would be top three easily, just because again you're literally smelling yourself being burnt, and the first things to be burned, and like melt, is your eyes. So it depends on like where do they start. Eyes melt apparently a lot lower temperature than skin. Found that out on this study. It's like that's like. <laughs> But there was also like, where was it? Uh, they were injected with animal blood, like horse blood. They were exposed to lethal doses of x-rays, subject to various chemical weapons inside of gas chambers, injected with seawater, burn and buried alive. Sand crack buried alive would be the worst. Yeah. That'd that's, be the worst. Yeah. Now, I've been in the gas chamber. It sucks. Like That's the only thing I can even relate to any Hold of on. this. Hear me out though. Allergy season? I, I would go back down just where I can breathe. <laughs> just so it cleans everything out. Because the amount of times I was like, like <laughs> that. <laughs> that's the only thing that is like relatable that I can be relatable to in any of this because I've been exposed I, to that. I don't think it's the same and, gas chamber. Yeah, that's, no, I, like, I mean, I, that's the only thing I can like even think of that remotely. I've been exposed yeah. To that stuff. yeah. Like trying to trying to even breathe, talk, or anything. I, one of the worst friends I've ever had. And that, no, I've never been injected with seawater or any of the other things that have gone on here. But like that, I'm like, this is horrible. Like, it, I, I couldn't do anything but like pray to get out of there. It sucked. This is around the time, I too. I freak out. This is around the same time that uh, Tetradoxin, Pufferfish, mm -hmm. was kind of like well known at this point. Like, we knew that Tetradoxin could kill you at high dosage, and they tested this shit out on again human live human people so it's not like oh they're dead let's see what the reaction no everyone is alive during these experimentations uh they tested heroin on it uh Co korean bindweed i don't know what that is so give me a second you're not gonna do a little pop-up for me and let me know what that is no there's not one not saying they went back home but they, uh -huh. they had like castor oil seeds yeah which is pretty much just rat poison yeah, because it's ricin. Um, massive amounts of blood were drained from prisoners in order to study the effect of blood loss. Uh, in one case, a liter, half a liter of blood was drawn at a two to three day intervals. Like that would, that would just, all this would suck. Like there's, there's no silver lining. None of this is like, oh, well that's, that's not too bad. No, this is all fucking terrible. This is like some of my nightmare shit, too. <laughs> they experimented with transfusions using different blood types to see how it would actually work. Here's just a, a passage from a unit member named Nao Akita. He said, in my experience, when A-type blood 100 cc was transfused into O type subject whose pulse was 87 per minute and temperature at 34.4 degrees Celsius. 30 minutes later, the temperature rose to 38.6 with slight in or slight trepidation. 
60 minutes later, the pulse was 106 per minute. Temperature was 39.4. Two hours later, temperature was 37. And three hours later, the subject recovered. But when AB type blood, 120 cc was transfused to O type, an hour later, the subject is described as. Oh shit, big word. Malaise and psychro. The Shiza. They're both like big fucking words. I don't know why we chose this fucking episode. I can't fucking read English at this level. Uh, in both legs. And then when AB was transferred and transfused into B type, there was seen to be no side effects. So like this is kind of where they almost perfected this is what blood types would do if if intertwined with each other. And just to think about like the like I've heard horror stories that people have been given the wrong blood by accident. Which is like a small amount and like, oh, it's terrible on the system. It wrecks them for for weeks. I could not imagine getting so much of it in intervals and be like, oh yeah, this is gonna suck. This I would rather die. It's just ugh. By the way, you can read this paper. It's called Man, Medicine, and the State, a human body of an object of government sponsored medical research in the 20th century. 2006. You want to know the page number? It's 3839. I got sources. Oh my god. And we're not like we're still just on chemical side of the house, too. Yeah. Where was it? I just read the list. Mustard gas was tested. Lewisite, cyanic gas, acid gas, white phosphorus, adipocyte, phosgen gas, uh, formaldehyde. Oh my god, it's. You know, white yeah. phosphorus is fucked up. That shit doesn't stop burning unless you suffocate the shit out of it. And that's what they like. What we shot for. It's like, it's very hard yeah. to, like, it's hard to uh, eliminate oxygen. And like when we would, we would shoot, we would shoot white phosphorus for to illuminate areas with, as for mortars. And we had strict orders, and obviously it's very well known that you do not, sh you cannot use it as a weapon. Yes, it's to illuminate only. Correct. So it's like if it's used as that, you're, you can be charged with war crimes. Because obviously, if it's catastrophic, if it hits something and bursts, because it can. Yeah. <laughs> it's just nasty. That's not safe, but yeah. And it's nasty. It just... Bone booth light tanks were used as portable gas chambers for these this prisoners. Is up. Some yeah, were... everything else is fucked up. But like a portable a portable fucking phone booth? Like yeah. oh I, I really fucked up. Get a phone booth. Think about some, your actions. Some were forced to wear various types of gas masks to test out the effectiveness. Others simply wore military uniforms and some were just naked. To test how this works on all degrees, on all levels. Psychopathically sadistic with no conceivable military application. Like that's how this entire unit 731 has been described. Is it's just there is no reason for any of this to have happened at all. And the reason why it was is, is still ridiculous. Let's see. Um uh, do, 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 do. 731 also tested chemical weapons on prisoners in field conditions, such as human experimentation of mustard gas. 20 subjects were divided into three groups, placed in combat placements, trenches, gazebos, and observatories. One group was clothed in Chinese underwear, no hat, and no mask, and was subject to as much as uh, 1,800 field gun rounds of mustard gas over 25 minutes. Another group was clothed in summer military uniform and shoes. Three had masks and another three had no masks. They were exposed to as much as 1,800 rounds of mustard gas. A third group was clothed in summer military uniform, three with and three with or two without masks. And they were exposed, exposed to as much as 4,800 rounds of mustard gas and five days after the shots. Or sorry, I skipped a lot. Oh, then their general symptoms and damage to skin, eyes, rips, respiratory organs, digestive organs were absorbed, observed at 424 
hour mark and then the two, three, and five days after this all took place, injecting the blister fluid from one subject into another subject and analyzed blood and soil were also performed. Five subjects were forced to drink a solution of uh, the mustard gas and the lewisite gas and water with or without decontamination. The report describes conditions of every subject precisely without monitoring what happened, I'm sorry, without mentioning what happened to them in the long run. And then they list some of them. Like, fucking ridiculous. Sorry, I got all up when you said they were put in Chinese underwear. <laughs> It's just it's what was listed. I'm really, I'm really googling what is Chinese underwear. Like, what is? I don't understand what that is. Like, I'm Under, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Underwear. Well, what, what's briefs, boxers, thongs, g strings? I don't know. Underwear. Why is it Chinese underwear? Maybe because it's different fabric at the time. China wasn't supplying the world with their fabrics like they are now. But I look up everything for Chinese underwear, but it's like full head to toe. The fact that that's the one thing you fucking take away from this whole goddamn well, subject weird. matter. Like, that's, Yes, I was just weird, but that just popped out like clothes with Chinese underwear. I don't understand what that means. Maybe it was just red underwear with a star. I don't know. Red underwear with a star. <laughs> We're going to skip over one because it's the reason why the U.S. got heavily involved in all this. Well, no, there's like a whole other one. We're just going <laughs> to ignore. We're not going to talk about <laughs> at all. But like the last two... Syphilis was tested, members orchestrated having forced acts between infected and non-infected prisoners to transmit the disease. Testimony of prisoner guards on the subject devise a method of transmission of syphilis between patients. Set victims were infected, they were uh, vivisect at different stages of the infection, so the internal and external organs could be observed as the disease progressed. Testimonies or multiple guards blamed the female victims as being the host of the disease, even if they were forcibly injected. Gentle, gen, gentles of the female prisoners that were infected with syphilis were called jam-filled buns by the guards. I'm reading this verbatim, okay? This is not me coming up with this shit. Uh, some children were, actually grew up inside the walls of 731. They were also affected. A youth court member deployed to train a unit 731 recalled viewing a batch of these subjects would undergo testing. One was a Chinese woman holding an infant. One was a white Russian woman with a daughter of four or five years of age. And the last was a white Russian woman with a boy about six or seven. These children were tested in similar ways to their parents with specific emphasis on determining how long infection periods affected the effectiveness of the treatment. Like, just... Oh, so terrible! So bad! And this, this is kind of what brought the U.S. though into all this. This frostbite testing. We were... Act when I say we, I mean the United States. The United States was actively trying to counteract frostbite at this time. And like they were doing a bunch of their own studies using pressure chambers. Mm -hmm. But again, it wasn't like they had readily available people with frostbite. They had to simulate it. So unlike these assholes who conducted experiments by taking captives outside, dipping various appendages into waters of varying temperatures, allowing these limbs to freeze. Once frozen, they would strike their effective limbs with a short stick, emitting a sound resembling that of a board when it gets struck. Ice was then chipped away, with the affected area being subjected to various treatments, such as doused in water and exposed to heat or fire. This was uh, done by an army engineer named Hasido. Yoshimura, who was referred to as the scientific devil and cold-blooded animal. Oh my god, it's like, it gets worse. But he put two naked men in an area 40 to 50 degrees below zero, and researchers filmed the whole process until the subjects died. Subjects suffered in agony. They were digging their nails into each other's flesh. 
Yoshimura's lack of remorse was even evident in the article he wrote. Uh, do do do. Uh, at uh, Japanese journalist psychology, 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 in 1950, in which he admitted to using 20 children and a three-day-old infant to experiment, which exposed them to zero degree Celsius ice water and salt water. Like, is this uh, disgusting? He developed a resistance index of frostbite based on the mean temperature of five to thirty minutes. After immersion in freezing water, the temperature of the first rise after immersion and the time app until the temperature of first rise after immersion. Why do you repeat the same sentence twice that? <laughs> they would keep them awake at night. They would starve them for 24 hours. They would starve them for 40 hours. Uh, immediately after a heavy meal, immediately after a hot meal. After exercise, after a cold bath, after a hot bath, like they tested all these frostbite techno or techniques in various different ways. High protein, low protein, no protein, standard diet, salt intake. Like it's, it is insane. <laughs> like there's, there's, I really don't have any other words for it. It's just, yeah, just terrible. Yeah, frostbite. Because I mean, that was what obviously it was a big deal for the U.S. in that in that time too. Frostbite, especially mm -hmm. in feet and hands. Yep. The face too as well. But it was because I think it only developed in one to two percent of mortality for for U.S. But that was something that was looked at a lot. But the fact that they were going above and beyond in their testing and Everything they were doing is just insane. The fact that they went through every, sin, every single idea or concept you could think of to even try and test as far as what somebody was eating. Yeah. It's crazy to see the effects on it. Well, it was like, it's it. The thing that kind of like pisses me off about all this, and there is. There is no way anybody could convince me otherwise. And again, hindsight's twenty twenty. But there is no way anybody could convince me otherwise. The fact that they were granted immunity, and here's the passage of it too. Um, so at the end of the war, uh, the end of the Second World War starts to come to an end. All prisoners within the compound were killed completely to uh, conceal evidence, and there was no documented survivors. With the coming of the Red Army, aka Russia, in 1945, the unit had to abandon their work in haste. Uh, ministries in Tokyo were ordered to order the destruction of all incriminating material, including those in Pifang. Uh, potential witnesses, such as 300 remaining prisoners, were either gassed or fed poison, while the 600 Chinese or uh, Maturian laborers were just shot. Uh, Ishii ordered every member of the group to disappear and take the secret to the grave. Potassium cyanide vials were issued for the use in case of remaining personnel were captive. Skeleton crews blew up the compound in the final days of the war to destroy evidence of their activity, but many were sturdy enough to remain somewhat intact. And then, again, fuck that part, so let's just add this to our history. Among the individuals of Japan after 1945 surrendered was Lieutenant Colonel Murray Sanders, who arrived in Yoko, Yo, Yokohama via the American ship Sergis in September 1945. You stop smiling and laughing at me mispronouncing his words. Sanders was highly regarded as a microbiologist and member of the American Military Center for Biological Weapons. Tokyo War Crime Tribune heard only one reference to a Japanese experiment with poisonous serums on Chinese civilians. This took place in August 1946. Oh, here we go. While German physicians were brought to trial and had their crimes publicized, the U.S. concealed this information about Japanese biological warfare experiment and secured immunity for the perpetrators. 
uh, critics argue that racism led to the double standards in the American post-war response to the experiment conducted on different nationalities, whereas the perpetrator of US 731 was exempt from prosecution. The U.S. held a tribunal that uh, 1948 that indi indicated nine Japanese physician professors and medical students were conducting vivisection upon capturing American pilots. Two professors were sentenced to death. The other were given 15 to 20 years. Ooh. That's a fucking joke. Like, that's ridiculous. Then you had the Soviet who held their own trials and chart brought them up on war crimes. Ugh. So. It's just uh, official silence during the American occupation of Japan. Post occupation, like, it's. It's ridiculous. Everything that happened, the fact that it was washed underneath the rug. And of course, the way, uh, I forget the doctor's name in here, who's like, it's just research. Research is research. And you know, it's helpful no matter what. Like, that's bullshit. Like, yes, it, research is helpful. But at what means do you say this is, the research outcome was not worth the lives of, I don't know, 40,000, 400,000, 600,000? So, it's, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, that's just very, very brief. There's tons of films out there. Looks like they're all Japan or Chinese. There's a Russian one. Okay. I really wouldn't yeah, be surprised like, if this comes out later. Possibly. And even like the the camp itself where they would where they would hold them. I mean they they were small small buildings. I mean they would do obviously the walk flies, but they had a small window to look in and that was it no other windows or anything they were chained on the inside there's no beds nothing like that they were just lying on the floor and everything else so like the I mean, no the the trains were wooden floors with just a hole that's all it was and hard, hard telling how full that stuff was underneath but people living in chains and stuff like that hard, couldn't move around very much and then it this it's insane no windows of any kind so you're sitting in darkness feeling like shit dying essentially <laughs> so it was i mean it was highly secured obviously as well but like when they would bring them in the prisoners they bring them in in black cars unidentified with just a ventilation hole no windows at all either when they get into the gates there was a, be a guard that they would report to and then they come through and they they called the inner uh inner guards of the of the prison or camp where you'll call it to get in they take them into a tunnel walk through everything and they would separate them out men women and children to any way they needed to into their areas and it was fucking gnarly what they would do now a lot of them were chinese but they kind of varied on whoever on how many different variations of they did POWs. Yeah. They also worked on, uh, even if you worked at 731, you were not granted immunity. Like, even some of the employees were tested on, but yes, per, uh, predominantly it was Russians and Chinese. Like, that was their main dem demographics that they they experimented on. I'm trying to make sure I use the proper word because I, I want to use like a really loose word that doesn't pack the same severity behind it. Uh, yeah. interesting fact um, I mean this whole thing is fucking interesting in like a very disturbing uh, sadistic way uh, however uh, scrolling down you can see like all the films and all the books and all the movies and all the music and the uh, uh, TV shows so like there's a reference to 731 in The Blacklist in the episode General Shiro there is a uh, reference to it in the X file episode, also titled 731. But the most interesting fact that uh, I didn't really like think about this or even read into it until now is in the Call of Duty Black Ops 3, the zombie map included in the second DLC pack, uh, Zesubo Noshima, is loosely inspired on the Unit 731 division with the story playing the idea of the ninth hidden aptly named Division 9. And then there was also an indie horror game 
Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion, uh, where Unit 731 experiments are explicitly referenced multiple times in the terms of Specimen 9, as well as labeling them, as well as labeling all human bodies in the game as logs. So I'm taking those logs to be thrown out. I'm yelling the logs together. So, and we kind of glazed over that at the beginning too. Like these people were referred to as logs. That's also what like all their documentation stated too is logs. It wasn't human. It wasn't Chinese. It wasn't Russian. It wasn't a prisoner of war. It was log was burned to a crisp. We tested, you know, salt water on these logs. Like the, so they, they did cover it up to an extent and it wasn't till it came out that logs meant human that the severity kind of broke up oh shit so look at that call of duty i mean reference in every episode slayer did a song about unit 731 as well yep. that's the only only band that i can even see as far as knowing anybody um no, yeah, Slayer's the one I know. German Death Step Crow. That's that's weird. Yeah. Yes, I mean, it, again, this is this is very much such a a glimpse into seven thirty one. There were so many more experiments that were happening that or that did happen that's not even covered in here, and that. There's one that we can read, but you and I are not going to discuss it. It's not. Yeah. So if you want to know more about this, I highly recommend you uh, researching this on your own. Unit 731, it's everywhere now. But again, go in in the mindset of this is also the 1930s, 1940s. Internet was not a thing. Okay. And it's war and trigger warning out the ass like we're fucking everything you know you can think of but oh interesting snippet during COVID-19 pandemic some scientists called for experimental data from unit 731 to be publicly released to the international med uh, medical community because the data available on human pathogen interaction could have helped epidemiologists with pandemic with the pandemic control the information has been withheld by both the u.s and japanese government so like it's I, I, that's probably why they've got brought up so recently even it's the fact that you know 19's coming around part two so it, yeah it's just all research it check it out uh i've there's the YouTubers that dive into this, which is actually how I found it the first time. And it's like a two hour video uh, by one of the ladies I watch and she dives into it and she normally covers very dark sadistic history. And this was one of them where she kind of like got brought to the edge. She's like, yeah, I don't want to talk about this anymore. So it was making her feel, feel weird. But, Wonder why? Yeah, who could have known? Like, if, if it would have, this sounds so bad. Had it been just like adults, I'd be like, oh, okay, I can read this. I can dive into this a lot more. The moment you mention children, I'm really uncomfortable. The moment you mention infants, I'm like, all right, babies, okay, you deserve to be fucking hung by your nads and shot endlessly. Like, I just, I, I yeah. Whole different subject. Yeah. So with so now with that educational background on this Ruggle, what's your thoughts on your school lesson today? Well, I'm looking at like the the time served by these guys as well, and like there's one guy like the the chief of the first division was sentenced to 25 and only served seven years and he was out. I mean, head of production only did seven years. Looks like only two of them from the the list that they give, two of them yeah. died. One died, one committed, so committed unaliving. Um, yeah, it's uh, chief of the veterinary veterinary service. What are we here? 
testing was. It's just, yeah, it's nuts from everything that they have. 20 search seven. Chief of Medical Service got 20 and it's only served seven years. All, like the, the max any of them is seven years. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I don't know what happened well, after that, but. He, uh, it says the Chief of Veterinarian Service, he served. Oh, uh, no. It just says he died in prison. It doesn't say me. He yeah. served. Interesting. No, he died, died in 52. But I don't, I don't know what that, when he was convicted. Yeah, that's what I was trying to find. So I don't know how long he was in there before he. Most of these are saying um, 1950. They made it two years? Yeah. I mean, if he was. So let's see if there's more information on it. I don't see anything on it. Because it's Russia. The trials of the Japanese perpetrator were held in Russia in December 1949. 1949 lengthy partial transcript was published in different languages. So 4950. So and in December. I'm gonna go off the stuff that's going on currently right now in Russia is that their courts don't fuck around. Oh no. And you can see you can see that plain as day now with all the social media and it currently going on today. Right now. Yep. You can look it up. There's a lot going on. So you can only imagine what happened, like the things that happened to those four people. Imagine what happened to these scientists before the age of social media. And, and this was not underneath Putin. This was, would have been Stalin. Yeah. World War II was Stalin. He was even worse than Putin. So do that information that you wish, but <laughs> That's going to be the end of this history lesson. We'll be back for another episode of history lesson at some point. Don't know when. We have to find a subject that hasn't been beaten. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, that's my piece. Yeah. Okay. Bad play on words. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. on a lighter note. <laughs> on a lighter note. Yeah, come check us out every Thursday over on Twitch for Roggle. And myself on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Kick. Cybermark so as we play um, Call of Duty mostly, part of our two guys one game pad game night. Everyone's welcome to hop on and play along with us. Hopefully this week we have a really good night like we did last time. We got two wins in three rounds. The first three rounds. I was proud of you. You did good. I did shit. You were you were uh you were actually providing a lot of help and communicating. I was I was blown away. I was this stupid bitch still out. ran across the fucking map. Check it out Thursday and see if he continues this, this way of playing. I think it's going to happen, but we'll see. <laughs> yes. You only get Check one. out the website, suitcaswongamepad.com for all merch. Anything you want made, we can pretty much get it done. Um, yeah. Also, check out uh, Sig Shellshock CBD. He's been doing very well with that. Yeah. It's not mine. I well, just... your, your promo code. Yes. CM Sig. Yes. Go to shellshockcbd.com, save yourself 10%, and honestly, live a better life. I love all their products. I have not used four of them. Tea, vape, dark matter, or lube. Maybe Rob and I can change one of those. Sounds like, uh, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> sounds like a fun Saturday night. Uh, still in! Bye, bitch! <laughs>